Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I've been, um, good evening, everybody. I've been said I'm Nick Woody. Um, I'm weird in that I'm a medic by background, for those who don't know me, and I now work within the patient safety team in the organisation. So I'm patient safety lead. I lead on serious incident and never event investigations. Um, and got into human factors through my time with the simulation centre, but I've done my MSc in human factors, which has led me down very much looking at methodologies in support of incident analysis uh, and investigation and some associated work as well. So just two little things to share. And people who I've met before, I've probably talked about these things to you before because they fascinate me. So apologies if you're hearing the same things again. Um, so the first is work that we've done looking at HFACT, so the Human Factors Analysis and Classification System. Um, this was supported by the East Midlands Patient Safety Collaborative as well. And the background to this is for anybody who works within the safety world knows that within healthcare generally, uh, historically our incident investigations haven't got to the depth that we would like them to get to. The learning therefore doesn't come out of them and actually therefore changes and improvements aren't necessarily made as much as we would like to. So how do we therefore move to a more in-depth analysis approach using appropriate methodologies? HVACs is one methodology of multiple different methodologies and for people who are interested, I'm very happy to share any of this afterwards, I won't go through it in detail now. But HVACs is a taxonomical based human factors analysis tool um, that takes you through a sort of structured approach of looking at an incident from, in the healthcare world anyway, the staff on the front line through the, the local area and how that affected the staff and led to them doing the wrong thing, the supervisory local management in that area and then the organisational management oversight and external to the organisation as well in a structured way. And so the work we did in support of this was to, this, this coding framework and this whole tool comes out of aviation originally, but adapted it to for use within healthcare. And there's a reasonable amount of evidence of its use in healthcare, but we've adapt, adapted it to the use in acute hospitals. So we now use this in particularly our level two serious incidents as one of a number of different methodologies. Um, this is the one I classically use when I'm investigating, but I'm very familiar with it now. Um, but a number of our um, investigators across the organisation have become used to it and are using it. And the feedback from it has been generally excellent from the staff who have used it. The feedback from the staff who have been involved in incidents by actually saying, oh, it's nice that you're not focusing on me for once, you're looking at it a little bit wider. Um, and actually from our commission as well, who we um, submit these investigations to. It's a start. Um, and it's an interesting start. And it seems to have got legs. So we're going to continue to use this and explore this. What it also highlights is when we, when we identify things like oh, there's been an error with a, a medical device or so, it also highlights the need then that we need to take that a step further, get input from ergonomists who have got expertise in medical devices, usability testing, which I certainly haven't got, um, and bring them in to look at that as a, a key part of an incident investigation. But like I said, I'm very happy to share that with people interested. The other, the other bit of work, is um, I'm sharing this on behalf of a much bigger group, um, was done through, with the University of uh, Loughborough with Patrick Watson, who I suit one of Sue's um, colleagues, I understand. Um, Patrick is, a, uh, I believe, a lecturer or reader in ergonomics and human factors and, and is obsessed with axi maps as, a, as an approach, I think is the best way of putting it. So accident maps, um, I'll come back to that first slide in a minute, is a... Again, a, a structured methodology for basically mapping an accident. It's as simple as that. Um, it comes out of original research from Rasmussen. People have done any reading around human factors will have heard that name. But it's a structured way of mapping an incident, looking at outcomes, the, the people involved in it and the processes they were following, the organisational influences and the, and the external influences. Again, very happy to share. We particularly applied this to stillbirths um, and looking at neonatal death stillbirths and intrauterine fetal deaths as well. The reason that we brought this up was because going back a couple of years, we, we knew we had a higher than normal stillbirth rate in, in locally within Nottinghamshire generally as well as quite a high stillbirth rate. So wanted to explore that in a bit more depth using a structured tool. And what we got to was, I'm not expecting you to read this, so don't worry, but this is, this is basically where we got to and where it has developed from is a participatory approach with um, local staff, regional staff, national staff to pull together one big massive axi map looking at multiple cases of all of the different contributory factors. So what we've got is an understanding local, regional, national factors that potentially lead to stillbirths happening. And you can see we came up with 130 different contributory factors and from that have come up with a almost a recommendation as to 45 different things. So it's massive. There's no way we're going to do all of these straight away. But what we're at the point now of doing 
is looking at where we can focus our efforts to undertake local improvement work, sort of quick early wins, but then also what do we need to take further afield, what do we need to share further afield as well. And with advents of things like HSIB, actually we've got some reasonable league good avenues now to go and share this work with. I'll leave it there. Thank you.